describe this. It's a time to watch, absorb, and think. As we re-rack that videotape to show you the scene again and give you the tip of Manhattan. This is videotape from just a few moments ago. And what we had hoped and prayed would not happen, could not happen, has happened. New York's World Trade Center, in effect, has been destroyed. The loss of life will be high. You can't do it! Major cities and small cities around the country are probably being evacuated as well. Here's an unconfirmed report of a buildings. 110 stories, 50,000 people working there. We don't know how many people were inside, but... I... Or exactly what happened that caused that second tower to collapse, we cannot tell you. CNN's Kelly Wallace is on the phone with us. Kelly, where are you? What can you tell us? Aaron, I'm just about four blocks north of uh, the location of where the World Trade Center was standing. I was actually on route to the command center, uh, people really staring in disbelief. And then as you saw, of course, the pictures watching that tower down, people just couldn't believe their eyes. Policemen pushing people immediately, people turning around and starting running, waves blocked. Now, can I ask where this picture is from? Do we know where this is? This, this is, uh, this is, this is outside the World Trade Center. The sign uh, indicates the approach to the, uh, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge. Bridge. To the Brooklyn Bridge. So we're. So we're, so we're on West Street, approximately uh, just north of VC Street there. And you can see the dust and debris. And this is at, I don't know if this is at an early stage or whether this is, is right now. It's at an early stage because there in the distance you can see the, at least one of the towers is still standing as people wander many of them days and look at the cell phones in their ears this is in the cell phone society i'm certainly true in the middle east people on their cell phones all the time seeking and offering reassurance to their families and their friends that something has happened in israel and at least those with heather in the palestinian territories these days it's constant traffic on the on the cell phones because there is such tension in the region and such tension here today which is extraordinary the people wanting everywhere to reassure or find out about what has happened to those who are near and dear to them. Uh, let, let one me... thing we should update for people listening, particularly in this area, who may have been worried, uh, there was a concern that if this building... You mean in the New York City area? Yes. There was a concern if this building fell that it would land on uh, the center they had set up at Stuyvesant High School where the, the students were still there. The reports from Stuyvesant High School now are that uh, everybody there is okay. Stuyvesant High School, the high school in the adjacent area, which the, the city and the state authorities set up. Where were you guys? God, it Bridget, just, where, were you, where were you when it's Just happened? like sitting here and watching that happen right now is like exactly where I was. You know, I was like at home, just turning on the TV, like I do, watching Lucy every day at 9 o'clock, and um, all of a sudden, you know, like, it just happened that the plane went into the building, and I was like, no way. I just, I could not think it was real. I thought it was like a Hollywood special effect, and mm -hmm. it just, it was so unreal until about, like, it took me about five minutes to hit me that this is, like, really happening. You know, like, this is real. And that's when I just totally started crying, and I just was, like, like, waiting for bombs to fall on me and stuff. And I just was crying, and I was so upset. And I just sat there with my eyes glued to the TV, you know. And I watched all that stuff, and I was like... Summer, where, where were you? I, I think a lot of people in Hollywood weren't sure if it was real. Um, that was actually the first day we got cable. Wow. So the same time the cell phones are ringing in the house, and, and the door's knocking, and the guy comes in and stock cable. So we're getting, not only when they 
you know how when they install cable, they yeah. turn it on for a minute, then they cut it off and turn it on. So we're just getting clips of a plane going in when the cable goes out. Oh, weird. For about an hour. So we weren't sure if it was real. And in the midst of that, the cable guy has the, the whole butt crack thing. And he's <laughs> butt crack. climbing up in the, the what he caught, above your house. Dish. The chimney. Cable. In chimney. The, Roof. Yeah, that ceiling. Ah. <laughs> the ceiling. Roof. The ceiling. And why he even did that, you don't even have to install cable that way. <laughs> and there's installation falling down in the midst. And, and we Did were, you, had it make you feel, I mean, like to know that like a bunch of people were dying? That's just what, like, I the biggest deal to me was. I, was, I thought maybe this was the end of the world. Yeah, that's like, really for like one second that came across my head. I was like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. I was thinking, this is happening everywhere. If it's happening in New York, then LA's not here. That's exactly what I've had in my Everybody head. knows I, I live on a boat and we have uh, direct TV. So every time we go sailing, we come back and the dish is out of line. So we didn't have TV for about a week. And I go to the boat store to get some supplies at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. And the guy's and all the world's endings. I, I walk, I walk into the long. store, and over the, the speaker I'm hearing, they have the piped-in um, radio. And it, I thought it was uh, Orson Welles and War of the Worlds, man. I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, the, the sales guy goes, yeah, 100,000 people died, the World Trade Center. That's and I just almost, you know, fell down. And it was, uh, I ran was back to the boat. Was there a time when either of you guys, like, cried or, like... Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I ran back to the boat. We found the little portable TV and, and started getting the coverage on that. And Everybody, our, our house was right next to Amgen in Thousand Oaks, and they let them go because they thought they may be bombing chemical plants. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people kept coming into the house and it was, I want to mention... Uh, and then watching the building come down, and like you see here, it's going on, I think, after one fell. And then I just live seeing the dust, people running through the dust. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw that live, as people running through yeah. the dust. And I was just like, oh, my God, you know, people were, like, running through the lives. I, I want to mention that the uh, video that you're watching is put together by Brian Hanish, our cameraman. And uh, in the background, you're going to be hearing some music. And uh, we have a special guest today, Jesse Cooper, who was uh, so motivated and uh, disturbed by the 9-11 attacks that he composed a CD, and that's what you're going to be hearing in the background. Uh, let's go full screen, bring up the music a little bit, and when we come back, we'll talk to Jesse about uh, the CD based on 9-11. Uh, so sad. Yeah. It made like so many people think differently about like each other and brought people together. You know? And you know, a lot of things were changed, like airport security. Airport stopped. You know? Did you do anything different in your, in your life day to day? I naturally fly a lot because of what I do. And I flew one month after this happened the second year. Everybody in New York City, person running down the street. Oh my God, it's happening again! You know, like people were terrified a month later. You know, a little plane crash, and it was like, it was like you know, it's happening again. You know, I think why we can't see it. New York City is just such a rock. Yeah. So strong people. Yes. You know, the attitude. They're very tough and strong. Something like this can bring New York to the Yeah, the rest of the world. Like it shows like how we're together with like society. I mean, I think the world is together, not just the United States. I mean, there are parts of the world that need to be together. This could bring about the world. What the world is like, I have been fighting along the way by the world. One moment there, thinking about how many sugars to put in their coffee and the next decision they make is should I jump out should of a jump out of the window story building yeah. uh, you know and I'm I, I think when you're faced with that I mean you you got to be, be it's demonstrating a tremendous amount of courage to say I'm gonna leave w the, leave the condition that I'm in and jump out of the building yeah I mean because you I mean a person to that decision exactly I mean 
I mean, it, I, don't, it's, I, I think it's, I would have just stood there. I would have just stood there. I wouldn't have jumped. You basically put a, with a decision in front of you, you know, split-second decision, you know, I'm going to die. You know, how do I want to die? Do I want to die, you know, flying through the air, uh, you know, or, you know, getting crushed? You know, basically, that's kind of what it came to. I want to I see a little or bit burnt, of this. Uh, go full fire. screen and, and bring up the music a little and, and the audio and the video. And, uh, and it was weird because nobody survived. Except for like two people. What was the total? 2,800? Firemen. How many firemen and ladies survived? Both here in New York City and in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. And everybody died. Uh, we just got a late word that uh, State Department security officials are denying those reports of a car bomb at the State Department. Like I said, uh, the music that you're hearing is uh, 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 no scored composed by uh, Jesse Cooper and uh, Michael Devine. Let's State talk to Jesse Cooper. The building has been evacuated. Top officials are still believed to be in the operations center, however. Highly secured areas in terms of penetration physically and otherwise. I want to ask just a little bit of a question. I've got a pictures of what's going what on the Pentagon. motivated you a section of the Pentagon to write some music about this whole thing. You know, it, it strikes me that uh, recording an album in the field. I've been planning to record an album for but uh, no one could have a month, this in reality. and I had everything all ready to go. My studio all set. And um, basically what ended up happening was is I just went to my studio that morning and just started recording. And uh, what you're hearing is a reflection of the way that, that I was being affected by um, the whole event that was unfolding in front of us all. Um, we, we then I, I ended up um, States, just recording and recording it, and actually um, an recording a lot of sound bites off the TV the and radio and uh, so on and so forth, and, and where just kept going and on and on for four days straight. Secure and Claire Shipman is on the phone from the White House. Claire, we are now looking at. Uh. At, at what and uh, you're you're promoting this piece right now. To, what are you doing? Well, the, the, it's going to be released the, roof the uh, of the White House. Uh, uh, middle of the first part at of August. In the distance, as they always do, week. talking occasionally to each and, other. There doesn't um, seem to be a high level of tension. It's, I'm going to be like doing some performances around. I'm doing a performance at the, um, the Santa Monica Church uh -huh. in the Ocean Park um, on August 18th on that Sunday. Where you'll be performing all of this. I'm actually going to be plan plans to go to New York and do some different appearances there as well. Um, so, what kind of response? Well, no one's heard it yet. You guys are like the first the ones first. to hear it. You're, you're Jesse yes. Allen Cooper? Yes, that's me. Yes, I was reading your thing here and you were going through the same thing like I was. Like what I said, like it happened to you too. Well, it was like someone called you and you were like in disbelief and stuff. So I bet everyone was feeling that same, you know, thing. I think because we were on the West Coast, it was a little bit, quite a bit easier to be more detached from it, but still we couldn't help but feel the fear and, and the possibilities that were there, you know, like there was really actually a plane that was taxiing to take off at LAX that was stopped. And there was a bunch of guys, terrorists, fighting with the pilots, and they were, you know, that was going to probably be heading for downtown. That never came really out on the news. We have been in touch with the leaders. I see here, I see here that it says it took you about four days. By the fourth day, you complete, completed over two hours of this music. That's correct. Wow, that's, so you were probably putting a lot of your emotion in, into it. You, like, for those four days, you felt a lot. It actually um, served as a way for me to kind of, you know, heal myself. Yeah. And it, by the end of the third or fourth day, I was actually writing happy music. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, I had I had really completed it by the end of the third day or so. And that's, then that's I ended up having one of the guest stars come in on the the, the uh, fourth day because I really wanted the the whole the music part the core of the music to be actually happen during those first four days because that was when the, this whole big special was happening at the National Cathedral we all probably remember that and it also says um, that by the fourth day you found out 
that they were terrorists and that they were like Middle Eastern, so you incorporated Middle Eastern sounds into this music as well. Yeah, exactly. So I brought in a woman that had just spent uh, several years in Israel, and so for her, she was like singing in these tongues that were Middle Eastern cool. overtones, but she had basically been having rockets and missiles going off around her like every day so she would just fell into this it was a natural and it brought in other percussionists and uh, my friend Jamie Papish played percussion and another guy from Syria came in and I was at when I, when I was recording the actual tracks I had a friend an engineer is, is Jewish and this guy from Syria started kind of going into this yeah, whole deal and like it was like so even within our group there was this whole real it seems like you adversity. put a lot of like real personal things into it and like it's full of all kinds of stuff yeah. you know like so it seems real personal let's, let's hear let's, let's, let's hear a little a bit of go full screen and, and bring up the music a little bit and uh, let's check out uh, Jesse's music yes. it's great mm -hmm. Make sure, make sure Summer's got uh, good audio. She's going to read a poem that's uh, in the, uh, yeah, the uh, booklet. booklet in Jesse's uh, CD. Saints and sages of all religions, I humbly bow to you in hopes that a healing will take place in our country, for our world, and amongst our families and friends, and that the world community will rise together to fight against terrorism and to heal the world of hunger and fear. How pretty. Yeah, very good. Very good, Jesse. Okay, can we hope it does? Yes. I think this inspired a, a lot of musicians and a lot of people. Yeah. Very inspirational. Thank you. That's so nice. When, uh, after the trade centers went down, and then one after another, the Pentagon, and then the other, the one in, in uh, Pennsylvania, I, it was like, is it going to keep going, you know? Yeah, it That's seemed like really a felt. domino effect of, yeah. like, fear, you know. It's, just like, it's one of those, it, you are almost selfish in thinking, oh, L.A. is going to be next. And then your selflessness, that, oh, my gosh, you know, how bad it was mm -hmm. and how bad it is. And, and the buildings are still falling. And it was, I was really... I think people were also looking at their own cities and they're looking at their own buildings and actually putting value to what's around them more, you know? I think people appreciated more like those buildings that we see every day that we just don't really think about, but they are special to us, you know, those material objects. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the king of the jungle gets I think it, and the good thing of it was it made people not be so selfish and, and come together and honor yeah. and work and hope. Yeah. It brought about more. What's interesting about the video that Brian put together here is you can see that he's got a very short attention span and he was watching the coverage and then he turned on to the animal channel and he's watching a, 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 a I'm just lion a little, mate. I'm a little disappointed on how the government um, kind of reacted to it though. I think they could have done a little bit better in like, like Homeland Security. <laughs> like all of a sudden I mean you go to LAX, it's not that secure. <laughs> I don't want to say this if you guys see me in the airport, but I've snuck things. <laughs> not weapons, but things. And they got these dogs that w go around and are supposedly supposed to like sniff out these things. Well, uh, you know, because I haven't brought any weapons, you know, you know, hopefully that's what they're sniffing for, but you know, hot, just a little bit of hot. You know, they're not catching it. They're not, they're not very secure. At one time I remember never get away I brought, with it again. this happened one month after this uh, happened, I went and I had a, a, a bottle where you put whiskey into, what is it, a flask? Mm -hmm. And I had carried, a, a, it was a beautiful silver flask, and I was carrying it over, and the uh, Mexican lady was looking at it, she goes, oh, you cannot take this onto the plane, and she unscrews, she goes, and this guy comes in with like an M16 order, he's like, what's in there? And I'm like, ah, ah. And she's like, oh, it's perfume, it's perfume, and then, and then the guy looks at me, she said, and the guy looks at me, and goes, what's in there, ma'am, is that perfume? He goes, I'm like, 
Uh, no, it's not. It's tequila. He goes, dump it out. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie to a guy with a gun. But still, you know, you know so, so I'm dumping out my tequila. And, you know, they're so afraid of me bringing tequila or hairspray or a nail polish remover on. And, you know, there's people sneaking all kinds of stuff on those airplanes. So I don't think the government did a lot about security when it comes to it. I think it's all bull poo poo. Uh -huh. LAX. You know, when like a bomb scare, it's just everything stops and it's just not good. So. Well, I think it's hard, it's hard to be in a position to make that decision. How much security, how much money are you going to put into that when um, if you think about if we're so prepared in one area, they're going to hit another area. Mm -hmm. So they need to like redo the whole airline system. They just you know, announced people who work there. Yesterday. I think everybody should just walk. Okay. Okay. Everybody just walk. The problem will be over. I actually um, okay. anybody who works in an airport should be like a trained, you know, like like an army, like the army or um, you bring us up Navy SEALs. So we can we're not you know, there should be like airport working at the Thank airport you. should be like a good I, job. I think know. they're working more on that. Train. But it's, it's hard. It, it shouldn't be such an easy job to get. You know, it should take a lot of skill, intelligence, like to become a police officer, or you know, to be you know. It takes two years to get a job at the post office. Exactly. And get a job at the airport. Exactly, and you get a job at the airport like that. And yet the airport, we're flying. You know, people. You know, it should be a different. Well, I think it was a very nice reality check because big reality check because we have been going on planes and not even and I still thinking travel. about it, putting our lives in somebody's hands we never see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a big reality check for a lot of people. So John, uh, the homeless guys uh, in our audience today, were you home? This is almost a year ago. Yeah. Were you uh, homeless back then? When it happened? What, 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 what were you doing the day it happened? Uh, I don't know. I didn't have any TV or anything. So it's like I used to have my box used to be like up long ways, and I didn't even know anything happened until somebody like came by and knocked my box over and it's like my it's like everybody my whole life kind of got tipped sideways for a while and it's like i didn't you know and do you have a it's been ever since do you have a, a, a more optimistic attitude or a pessimistic attitude for your own future as a result of no uh, i don't put my box up more like that anymore because i'm afraid somebody's going to come by and knock it over again so i just kind of keep it laying low and, <laughs> well, what I meant was, are, are you tr trying to become unhomeless, or are you content to be? I wish I could, yeah, but you know, I'm trying. Do you have Do you have a disability? No. No. no okay. Like You're just basically lazy. lazy. Okay. <laughs> kind of lazy procrastinator. That's different. All right. Let's uh, let's go full screen and and uh, get, get, Jesse's, get Jesse's music going a, a little bit, and we'll but give people the feel of the, the music with the video. He used to work for the dot com. <laughs> X.com. Let's hear some music. That's scary. Those guys are running for their lives. Oh, yeah. At that moment, you know, they think they're going to die. And they're just, like, running for their lives. You know, I was involved when I was a young kid in a plane crash. And uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty wild. I was about four years old. And uh, my parents were going to a party in the building, the apartment building next door to, uh, to where we lived in North Hollywood. And they went down there, they left my brother and I, he was older, and they left us up there sleeping. And uh, they got down, they knocked on the, the door of the uh, party, and my father realized he forgot his cigar. So they walked back upstairs to our apartment. While he was up there, a small Cessna, this is 1958, crashed directly into the apartment where the party was. Blessed residue it went up uh, like a, like, just like the, the 911 uh, explosion, and everybody in the apartment was uh, just, I would have been an orphan at four years old if it wasn't for my father's cigar smoking. But it, uh, I can remember the, the, the people screaming and the planes, the tail of the plane sticking out of the building. And it was, it was horrific. And, uh, I just, uh, it breaks my heart every time I see any, any of this footage, but I don't, I don't think we should stop viewing it. I think we should always look at it. Not only because, not only because of uh, the uh, t terrorism involved in it, but all the people that lost their lives, uh, we can't forget about it, ever. We, we, we should keep this. They should show this in schools to, to, to teach the, people, uh, the, the children growing up about peace, that this should never happen again. I'm sure this is the worst thing that any of us have ever seen in our lifetime, and it may, and it may top the list forever. You know, so. Yes, but this will never happen again. It won't. That that guy was crazy. 
Now. Let's go. Let's go full screen. Take us out of it for a minute, and I want to see some of this. To save the cable got it and our cable that day. It was the very first day. So when the cable went on in your house, this is what you saw. The cable came on for three seconds. We see a plane crash in the World Trade Center. It goes out. It comes back on. Wow, that's crazy. You know, we see the the news guy. They were still in disbelief, not even knowing what to report. Should they release this information or not? Remember Fourth of July? Um, when those, uh, so you think there was like a, a bomb scare the, or there was like a plane crash as well in, in a park? Yeah, yeah, When yeah. that happened, everybody right away thought, oh my God, we're getting attacked again, you know? And, yeah. and you know, that had nothing to do with that. But now anytime a little thing like that happens, people just start panicking. I drove into my office the, the day uh, after this happened and uh, there's a Hispanic parking lot attendant and uh, the, the, uh, there was a fire in a building down the street. Nothing major, just some smoke. The firemen went and I pull up into the parking lot and the uh, parking lot attendant goes, the Taliban, the Taliban. <laughs> Everything that's going wrong is, is the Taliban. <laughs> you know, you run a red light, you get in an accident, the Taliban, the Taliban. So, you know, one thing I think we do need to discuss real quick is uh, those what happened that people erased. became actually a little bit racist after this. Oh, yeah. When they saw people with, uh, who wore those things on their heads, you know, calling them, you know, bad names and stuff. It, it didn't do much to me as a person. You know, I didn't get any more racist than another. But they got more racist towards me. I noticed that so by, because I look at everyone and I smile. Yes, if I looked at them a certain way, they would get defensive so towards me. You know, that would have been me. They'd be like, you know, what are you looking at? You, you know, and I'd be like, oh my God, I didn't do anything. You know, I was just smiling. You know, I look at everybody. Yeah. But you know, it didn't make me anymore. Yeah, me either. But I think it's the same. They're, they're more defensive. And I think it's nice that you put some of the Middle Eastern effects in your music, too. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting, Jesse. Well, I, might, I must say Middle Eastern women are some of the most beautiful women. If anybody yeah, uh, is interested after the show uh, in Jesse's music, you can call us uh, on our phone number, uh, email us, and we'll get you in touch with Jesse. The uh, CD is uh, really great. Here's the cover. Very good cover. It's, uh, Love it. Zoom in on this, Brian. Love it. Come on, come in real quick. Let's get Jesse's album in there. And those were chilling, chilling accounts that we And uh, great music. Even if you're not playing it uh, behind this uh, horrific footage, it's still nice music. So if you're interested, uh, give us a call. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks, everybody. And um, go full screen and let's... Uh, in uh, another part. some more of the news footage from September 11th. Patty, Patty, I'm going to interrupt you uh, for a second. We, we told you there was a second plane that went down. This one, a brown, 80 uh, miles southeast of Pittsburgh. DKA TV. Universal and Pennsylvania, we don't, I mean, that would... I don't mean to have you have sure. to defend the intelligence so community. Easy to and that struck make the tower in the front. Make love that building love also not collapsed. Yeah, let's make Nuclear love. weapons and research complex in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, put under heightened security. Right. Don't hate anyone. Love it is all. now coming up on uh, 10.59 East Coast I time. We'll, we'll give you, you a too. recap of what we've seen. Oh, 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 I love Note from one of the hospitals downtown in New York City. I love all you guys. They say that hundreds of people have been On the camera, everybody. Michael, Jesse, John, the homeless guy. I love you, Mom. I love all of you. I love everybody out there. The only person I have a problem with is Brian. I got a problem with you. God bless everyone. I got a problem with you. Covered and you later, over there. God bless <laughs> everyone. Mostly had burns. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we've been doing a, a number of area hospitals, including St. Vincent's, NYU.